How's everybody doing today? We have a stream that's actually not super late because I actually got to bed at a reasonable time last night. Um, I am looking at my screen, which I'm not looking at the monitor or the camera. All right. So just make sure I have all my crap closed out. I was going through and getting everything loaded and unzipped. Um, you know, the other fun stuff. So the, if you guys are not familiar, so my, my, my mic is running a little hot there, so I don't want to blow your guys' eardrums out. Let me turn that down. We're, we're in the, we're in the yellow area now. So we're good. All right. So the Hero Me is a mounting cooling system. Uh, there's a bunch of different terms you can use for it, but it's basically a hot end mount that attaches your printer's hot end to your printer. And it's an aftermarket mount. You print yourself, you supply some screws and nuts and, you know, different fans if you want. And you can then get better print quality because it has better cooling than the stock setup. So I've been talking with Andrew, who is the creator of the Hero Me, and I have his Gen 3 on my Ender 3 right there. And I am going and putting this on my Ender 3, so I'm upgrading from the 3 to the 5, my Ender 5 Plus, and my CR10. Now, my CR10, which is right next to the Ender 3 right there, that has a really old volcano cooling setup, and it works okay, but I want to get everything on the same standard, basically. So I'm going to have everything go on to the Hero Me system. So uh, eventually, uh, once we get everything ironed out, we'll actually be selling full-blown kits of these mounts too so and you'll see, you'll see why there's a lot of work involved which is why i wanted to put this video out uh since he just launched this and going over uh the selection because there's a ton of parts on this um and it looks like a lot but once you understand how the system's designed it makes a lot of sense so what i want to go over is uh, i'm going to be selecting parts for my machines so on my ender 3 i have the stock hot end with a single 50-15 fan and Easy ABL Pro 18 millimeter. On my CR10, I've got our tough hot end with the high flow volcano block and the Easy ABL 18 millimeter. On my Ender 5 Plus, I have the stock hot end and the Easy ABL 18 millimeter. So I'm going to go through and select all the parts for each one, and I'm going to be printing these in ABS. Now, according to his guide, um, if you have a sock on your hot end, you can print the ducts in PLA. Now, in my experience from printing any kind of fan ducts, whether it's the Pets Fang or the Hero Me type setups, anytime they're near the hot end, you do it in PLA, eventually it will start sagging. And, you know, the heat from the block, you know, let's say these are, let's say my, the tips of my fingers are the, the tips of the duct and like, imagine like, you know, Imagine my nose is the nozzle, okay? So the heater block's right here, and eventually over time, what happens is that the, the, the ducts start going like this because the heat is slowly, slowly melting them away. So what I would recommend you do, and what he recommends you do is, especially if you don't have a sock, is to print the ducts in ABS or PET-G at the very minimum. Um, so now when we, since I have uh, my my ABS machine right here, the one that's got uh, the head from Jerry Knapp, aka 3D Printing and Painting. Um, that's my ABS machine. So I'm going to be putting these onto my ABS machine, and I'm going to be slicing up three sets of files. So one is a complete set of the ones for my Ender 3, the CR10, and my Ender 5 Plus. And then I'm going to do a stream later. I'm not sure if it's going to be today or tomorrow, uh, but putting them on each machine so you guys can see what's involved with that. Um, so let's go over the document. Now, he has a document here, and it's really well put together. So let me let me switch over here to the, uh, the main monitor share. So as you can see here, I have the PDF. So I've already extracted all the files. Here's the Thingiverse page. There's a link in the video description for the actual download here. And he's made quite a few updates. Um, uh, I I have not printed any yet, but uh, Aaron and Mac and Tor have been working on this with it, with Andrew, aka Media Man. Um, and you can see he's got all sorts of different setups. Um, now, in my opinion, you don't need dual fifty fifteen fans, but people like to do that. The only thing I like about the dual setups is uh, being able to have an LED light bar, because he does have that as an option. 
Um, but I don't have any dual setups because I, I haven't found that they're that much better unless you're using like a really, really big diameter nozzle and printing fast. So all of my setups have single ones. So you can see here for an example, like this is, uh, this is the tough hot end here with the volcano style block. And this is one of the setups we're going to be putting together, except I'm going to be doing a single, um, 5015 fan setup. So let's go, let's go, uh, into the PDF here. So he's got intro here. Printermods.com is going to be offering upgrade kits. And then he's got here that we're going to be doing it, which is true. Um, I just have to get all, uh, basically what we're going to be doing is getting, uh, our suppliers put together pre-packed bags of hardware. So that all the bolts, the nuts, um, to cover all the different variations, um, and then sell them along with the printed parts. And we'll be doing them all in ABS. We won't be doing any PLA or pet G it'll be all ABS parts. So he's got just an introduction here, all the different printer printers. They support all the different CR 10 models, including the V2, the CR 20, the CR 10 S max. Um, He's got pretty much all the major bases covered for Creality's machines, which is why I really like this whole system. Um, the only thing with it is because it covers so many different things, it can be a little confusing. So he's done a really good job at here laying everything out. So what we want to do is I'm going to put this side by side here and I'm going to select the files I want for this. Um, so I let's do my let's do my CR 10 with the volcano setup. So. That would be the E3D V6 Volcano or TS3D Tough. So I have our TS3D Tough hot end with the Volcano. So I'm going to need these two files here, the E3D Gantry Adapter 1B.stl. So let me see, CR, okay, dash Ender 3, and then I'm gonna, I need these two files here. So CR dash Ender E3D Gantry Clip and then CR Ender Gantry Clip. So I'm going to take these and I'm going to drop these into my slicer. So there's the two files. And now we've got the gantry adapter plates, so we can move on. So you can see here he's got all these. So you select your gantry adapter plates, and you move to the next section. So the next section here is going to be the bases. Now, since I am using our tough hot end with the Volcano, um, which also crosses over to the E3D V6 Volcano. So although the Volcano is for you guys that aren't in the loop, it's just a longer block for either our hot end or the E3D V6. It's the same upper heat sink. It's just a different heater block that's twice as long, so it's got a longer melt zone. So for that particular setup, and this is, for, like I said, for my CR10, which has that Volcano-style setup on there, um, I'm going to need the Hero Me Gen 5 Base under or underscore base underscore two so this one right here if i pull this up that's this guy right here and each base is slightly different depending on what it's mounting so i'm going to pop that into my slicer here and i also need the clone collar and the clone air dam so the hmg here we go clone collar clone air dam and we're going to put those in there if I go ahead and do a auto range. So these are the parts we have so far. Now, moving on. So we got the bases and the hot ends. Uh, the next thing I need to do is the actual adapter plates. If we're using a direct drive, but since we're not, we can skip that. But if you guys do have one of like the direct drive type adapters, you can follow this section here. Um, but I need a cooling duct now. So I have a single 5015. Okay. And I want dual ducts. Okay, um, I don't know why he has single. Um, I would recommend going with the dual ducts. So I run single 5015s on our machines. The only machine I have here that does not have single and has dual is uh, the printer called Bertha, which is an AlphaWise U10 with a very large uh, 0.8 volcano nozzle. So that thing prints a lot of plastic in a short amount of time, and having the two fans is required. And I'm actually using a uh, Petsfang type setup on that one. Um, but that's one of the only applications or use cases I've seen where you, where dual fans actually come into play. If you're using like a 0.4 or even a 0.6 nozzle, a good single 50, 15 fan, like what we carry, uh, will do just fine. So I know I have a single 50, single 50, 15 fan and I want dual ducks. So now I want to go over this cause he's also got two different styles here. He's got a single and then there's also one that has 30 degree here. So if we go over on the files here, so We've got the 5015 30 degree dual radio fans, dual ducts. I want single radio fan dual ducts. 
And there's also the one without the 30 degree. So let's take a look at the difference between these two parts here. So it might be hard to see. So let me, let me auto range here. So here's the, the 30 degree. The, the difference between these, obviously the duct is a little bit different. You can see it's got a little bit different curvature. Uh, but what that 30 degree refers to is the angle of the fan. So if you see here, the fan is actually at a 30 degree angle tilting away from the hot end. Um, I am going to do the uh, the regular one that just goes straight up. I don't need to have it angled. So I've got a lot, almost all my parts here. Um, I've got my duct. I've got my base. I got a little clip and a tap adapter parts. So let's go through this further here. Uh, let me just check on the chat here too. Do do do. Uh, let's see. Oh, I got Zolan in here. DB3D Dan Midnight Ninja. Yuldorico, um, let's say Travis, 3D Printing Llama, Viking, Tripod, what's up? He's relatively new here. I know he lurks, but he actually said something in chat. Uh, Gary Rivet, Michael Cassell, and we got 60 people watching, wow. I feel like we get more in the evenings. Okay, anyways, enough of my ramblings. Um, so we've got the, the cooling ducts. So you can see here, depending on what setup you guys have, um, he specifically states here, he is no longer creating the 4010 uh, ducts. So if you have the stock fan on your printer, um, you cannot use this because it doesn't push enough air. And I, I do agree with him. They're decent, but the 5015 or even like, we don't carry 4020s, but... Um, the stock fan is just okay. Um, you know, the only way I would say keep using the 4010 is if you are just keeping the stock hot end set up. Um, uh, but for something like, like this, uh, where you're doing a bigger aftermarket mount, you definitely want a bigger fan. You're going through all this trouble. You might as well change the fan. Um, so the next thing is the, the ABL sensor. So he supports our easy ABL, the BL touch, and then, you know, generic sensors and OEM sensors. So, um, I have an 18 millimeter easy ABL and now the only thing, and I got to talk to him about this. Um, he's got two different, uh, he's got two different mounts here and I'm going to print both of them just to see how they are. But you can see he's got the close and the narrow. Okay. And this one says for use with single fan dual duct use with 5015 single fan dual duct. So I'm going to print both of these cause it's hard for me to visualize them. Um, in the actual software here and you guys will see what I mean. Um, it's a little warm in here. Hang on me. Come on. Uh, there we go. Damn remote. So you can see here that the two mounts, they're, they're, they're slightly different. So I could put these all together and see, but I'm just going to print both of these and see how they come out. So I've got all my, I got all my parts here. Now he, he specifically states in here when you go to actually print them and you see there's, there's other options here. Uh, he's got different fan guards and led bars. Um, I did toss my own STL file in here, which I emailed him if he wants to throw it in there. I don't know if he's going to, uh, but I put in the folder here cause I'm going to print this and put it on mine, but it's a little 40 millimeter guard with our logo on it. So I'm going to put that on my machines. And I did, I did send him this file. I told him if you want to throw it in the pack, you can, uh, you don't even need to credit me for it. I had this file sitting from uh, the failed Alpha project, um, and I have it on quite a few of my of my machines here. So, might as well put it on. I like it. Now, let's get into the actual printing, which is where where the the difficult part is, and it's going to be time consuming a little bit, even for me. Um, now, you have here. He's got a list of all the bolts and stuff you might need. And this is the kind of stuff that we're going to be sourcing and getting packs of. So like all these list of parts and then some. So we'll make sure there'll be extras when we do actually sell these like full kits. Um, is we're going to basically have little bags that are pre-packed with all these different types of bolts and nuts. So it covers all the bases type of thing. So, but for the printing of the parts, he is recommending setting to 35 to 50% infill. And the direct drive adapter should be at 85% or higher. And use automated supports from the build plate only. Uh, lightweight cooling ducts can use a few well-placed supports inside the part, not down into the duct. So let me show you right here. So this is going to need to be uh, a manual process here. So if I do supports here, let me let me just do a, a print and show you guys what it looks like when it does auto supports. So you can see here that 
Uh, everything looks good except for the lightweight duct, okay? You see that there? Now, one thing I can try to do is, uh, well, it's not going to help in this case because you see this overhang here, and, and what I like to do when I'm previewing my files is d bring it down layer by layer and see if there's anything floating in midair, okay? It's the easiest way to do it, okay? So I'm coming down, I'm watching it, um, and as we get to the lightweight ducts here, you can see... Oh, those are those are in midair. So we're gonna need to manually place some supports right, right here because obviously that's that's not gonna print. Okay, so we need to manually add some supports here. And if I if I keep previewing this, you can see here some need supports there. Those will probably be fine. And then right here on these next three here. So one, two, three. So one, two. Three, so I need some supports there, and probably more. Yep, four. So I'm gonna need to support this entire line here, and then this overhang here. And you can see because I only have supports coming up from the build plate, this is what happens. So if I now let me show you what happens if I tell it to just put put supports on the entire thing here, and this is not gonna work because it's gonna fill the duct, and you'll see what I'm talking about in a second here. Um, there we go. There's some duct. <laughs> I'll, I'll drill down in here. So the reason you don't want to do uh, full supports is because, look at, there's inside our duct. You're never getting those out. There we go. That's why you don't do your standard supports. That's why you have to do manual. Okay? So you see those are inside. It's obviously going to block the airflow. So to get around this, what we have to do is... I'm going to put the supports back to from build platform only. And now I'm going to have to get in here and manually add supports. So I need to manually add supports. And then we're going to slice it and check it and slice it and check it until we see that everything is, is properly supported. So I'm going to make some fatty supports here. I'm going to add a new support structure. And I can just come in here and just kind of put these in just like so. Let me pull this in. Oh. You can see there, this one's... Uh, 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 uh. So let me show you what that looks like now. So there we go. So now you can see, and I can probably do thinner supports here. Uh, which I'll, I'll do. That's, those are, those are fatties. Those are not, those are overkill. Um... Oh, <laughs> okay, so this is one thing I forgot that S3D does. As soon as you add manual supports, you see how it's not generating them? Okay, so in S3D, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here, tools, customize support structures. I'm going to clear all the supports, and I'm going to have it generate from build platform only. So there we go. That covers those. And then I'm going to add my own in here. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to get in here. Get all the way in there. And we're going to get these underneath where we need them. So, let's go ahead and add these in. And now you want you want to do some overlap here. So you can see here I'm just clicking, overlapping, making sure that it's supporting them. We're going to come all the way over to the one that it added in automatically. Let's zoom out a little bit. There we go. So again, we're going to need to come over here and do the same thing. So let's go ahead and add these in. And then we'll see how this looks. I wish my space mouse worked in S3D, but it does not. All right, so now let's see how these look and see if we need support anywhere else. Yeah, you can do Kira tree supports, but I'm, I don't use Kira. 100% S3D over here. So now we have a nice supported duct, okay? So now if we do the preview again, we want to check and see if I, if I missed anything and if I need to add in even more supports or not. 
and these should break off pretty clean. Um, I know these are all going to be pretty good, so let's go ahead. I'm, I'm mainly focusing on the fan duct because the fan duct is what needs all this additional support, and he's got these angled going up, so you're not going to need supports like right, right here in this area. But you can see here they're they're nicely cradled, and let's go up. And as soon as that comes out right there, we got support underneath it. And you see it builds up the dense support layers. And we're good. So this should this should be able to print just fine now. I'm going to make sure we don't have any in the duct area. If you look, we're all good. We're all hollow inside there. Let's go down. Just make sure everything looks good. I'm just double checking any other stuff. Just looking over here on the side where the, the base is. See if there's anything that needs support. That'll bridge just fine. Yep. So this is ready. This is ready to. Uh, this is ready to actually. Uh, you're missing the rings in the fan duct. Am I? No. If you're talking about these, these will print just fine. You do not need support in here unless you're talking about something else like these. These will print just fine with no support. At least on my machine. Um, what rings are you talking about? That's the only rings I can think of. Because even this will print fine with no support. Right here. Oh god, there you go. S3D does that from time to time. I don't know why. So I'm happy with this. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Like I said, this is going to my ABS machine, so I got a folder for each one. And this is the uh, CR10 Hero Me Gen 5 Volcano ABL18. Just so I know what this file is. Um, uh, I can't remember what IP... Vicky's on. Let's see. Uh, T. Hogan. Is that it? That's it. Gotta go in here. Where's Vicky? There's Vicky. I gotta update this. Apparently, there's a new version of Octofarm out. I haven't updated it yet. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and upload that file. And Vicky should be clear. Let's see, is Vicky clear for, for takeoff? Vicky is clear. All right. Let's go ahead and preheat that, that printer. There we go. This actually started its life as an ANET A8, believe it or not. All right, so I'm going to put that over here and make sure that starts its print correctly. So let's move on to the next one. Now, I believe, now I spent all that time doing the supports on that duct. Now I believe, I'm going to double check this, but I'm pretty sure they all use the same duct. Well, let's double check, because if that's the case, and I don't have to go through the support song and dance again, which is correct, yes, so I can use the same duct on all of my machines, which is great. So, I'm going to start over um, and get rid of these parts that are for... Alright, so I don't have to go through this again, so I can use the same duct on every single printer setup. So, let's go back through. So, the next one I want to do is my Ender 3 that has the stock hot end and our Easy ABL Pro 18 millimeter. So, I need the OEM-MS gantry adapter, so CR, OEM-MS gantry adapter, and then the gantry clip, the CR-Ender gantry underscore clip, uh, CR-Ender gantry underscore clip. All right. And moving on, so the hot end base, so I'm going to use base 1 this time instead of base 2 because we're using the stock hot end. So we got base 1 here. Alright, 
and um, I think that should just our easy ABL mount. And I think it's going to use the same exact one. Yeah, so I'm going to print one of each, the close and the narrow. So there we go. That's for the easy ABL on the Ender 3 with the stock hot end. And there we go. Oh, he like stepped these up so you actually don't need supports there. Oh, that's nice. All right. Those might droop a little, but it's really not going to matter. All right. So I'm going to save this. We're going to do a zero. Uh, same thing. Uh, stock. Under. Under three. Okay. So that's all sliced. Now, what's the difference between the five and the three? So I have the five plus, the under five plus. Uh, so the five, five plus, so we need the gantry adapter and the clip. Okay, so, and that's clip four. Okay, so get rid of clip one. And we want clip four. Okay. No, we don't want to scale that. And I'm assuming this base is going to be different for the five and the five plus. Those are the adapter plates. Okay, so it's a different gant dantry adapter as well. So it's a four A. So I get rid of the one A here, and we want the four A, which is right here. So a slightly different adapter. Um, it looks like we're using the same easy ABL mount and the duct. So let's see here. What base do we use for the Ender 5 Plus? Do they all use the same one? It looks like they do. Okay, so base one is still for this. Okay. So it looks like how he has this set up is... This plate attaches to the carriage and then this bolts to this plate. So that's why these can use the same one, which is nice. Um, more overlap of parts and modularity is, is nice. Uh, now this part, uh, I'm gonna wanna print this laying down here and then let it do supports. All right, so we got the ABL mounts. Okay, I'm gonna print both just to see which one fits. And we can do, slice here see everything so it, it pops some supports in there we got our supports on the duct so that should be it so and I got my little fan grill in there all right so I'm gonna change this name so this is the under five plus and uh, this is this is at temp now it's taking its probe readings I'm going to upload these just so they're on that machine. And then I'll get these all printed. So uh, how much print time? This is saying, well, this is already five minutes. Um, there's obviously no ETA. What is S3D? This is saying nine hours. So it's probably going to take about 10 to 12, I would say. Um, that's just my theory. So... Basically, that's it. You need to go through, you need to select your parts. Um, I'm going to let this start printing. Let's see, am I going to need to baby step this? I don't know. This one This one has a mind of its own sometimes. Nope. That, that purge line looks pretty decent, so I think we're good. All right. Anyways, I won't bore you by watching a first layer go down. We've already seen that a million different times. Yay, look at that first layer. Yay, don't have to touch it. All right, so I'm gonna let that do its job and print these in ABS. Um, that's about that's about it. So take a look at the Hero Me Gen 5. I'm really excited to play with this because the modularity of the system and having uh, basically consistency, consistency through different machines and different hot ends is gonna be really nice. Um, 
I'm really excited. So, um, if you guys want to check this out, the Hero Me Gen 5 link is in the video description below. You are going to need some screws and nuts and bolts. So, if you have assortments, um, it would be a good time to dig those out. Um, we do carry assortments in our shop that have up to 25 millimeter long M3s. That's the longest our assortments go to, which is longer than most. Um, but certain ones require 35. And I do have... I, I will have <laughs> enough screws if I get my miscellaneous box out here. I I, I, I should have enough screws for, <laughs> for this mount. Um, <laughs> so I think we'll be good. But anyways, um, I hope you guys check it out. Check out the Hero Me in the link description below um, if you want to upgrade your cooling. If you need a 5015 fan, we carry 12 and 24 volt 5015 fans in our shop at th3dstore.com um, and also screw assortments. So we will be selling these eventually. I don't have an ETA because I need to get the hardware kits put together, like all the, the bags of screws, nuts, bolts, that kind of stuff. Um, to cover all the bases and different variations with these mounts. So, I would invite you guys to check it out. Go ahead and print it, put it on your printer. I'm going to go ahead and print all three of these. So, I'm assuming just because of print time alone, I'm going to do it on my machine here instead of tying up the print farm. Um, so, I will probably be back in a day or two with a stream and putting it on one of the machines uh, just so I can show you guys what's involved and go over that and we can all hang out. So, Hope everybody's having a wonderful Monday, and as always, happy printing, guys. Take it easy, and stay safe out there. Bye-bye now.